I'll share my screen. All right, kinetic theory is going on. All right. Thermal properties exams next week. <laughs> okay. Revision for exams. When is your exam? Next one? When is the next exam? 16th is physics. Is there any exam tomorrow? Tomorrow there is nothing, right? Starts on 1st of October. Very good. All right. Mute yourself. Who is Sri Devi Gattu? Is there anyone of that name in our class? Pradyun. <laughs> okay, it's Pradyun. Is it that that's your mom's name, is it? Okay. All right. I think you can't change it now. All right, so uh, guys, we'll start. All right. Today we have to complete this chapter, and very little of this chapter is left. And uh, once this chapter gets over, we can get down to uh, probably thermal properties of matter. And you have your physics on 15th of October, right? 15th of October. And till thermal properties is coming, right? In your exam, till thermal properties is coming. Okay, so I guess till thermodynamics, till thermodynamics is coming. That's little too much. <laughs> uh, so what we can do at max that we could just finish up the thermal properties of matter till that. So thermodynamics, you can do it your own this time round, right? Otherwise we'll not be able to do anything properly. Whatever we do, we have to do it systematically so that it is useful for next two years. Okay, not just for your UTs. All right, so I hope all of you are agreeing to whatever I'm saying here. And do you guys do the homework assignment? Like I, I receive uh, not more than 50-60% of uh, students assignment. You can see every week uh, we put it on the group. All right. So those who are not doing it, do it. All right. Start doing it. Otherwise, it will be a problem, right? If you're not doing the assignment, please do not expect any marks, any good marks in the monthly test, right? It will be an unfair expectation that you do not do what is required and then you are expecting good marks in the monthly test. That never will happen, okay? So if you want good marks in the exams, in the monthly exams, you need to do the assignments regularly. Fine. And the Kimon test is the coming Sunday. You guys are all aware of it, right? Coming Sunday is your mains level test. I hope all of you are aware of it. Okay, great. Anyways, so let us start this topic of, uh, of the mechanical properties of fluids. All right. This topic may get over probably in two hours or a little bit more than two hours. And once we complete this chapter, we will uh, then look at the uh, probably we'll solve questions from this chapter rather than starting a new chapter today itself. Once this gets over, we'll be solving questions on it. Okay. All right, guys. So this is the section. I will have to reshare the screen. Okay, so write down this, uh, the first topic that we are going to discuss is viscosity, write down. 
when we talk about viscosity what comes in your mind honestly what comes in your mind the first thing that will come in your mind sharing of screen Okay. Hmm. Honey, very good. So this is the first thing that come in everybody's mind. Honey, right? I'm sure that many of you uh, would have thought about it. All right. So we associate viscosity with honey somehow. All right. Now what it is basically, it is a uh, viscosity is a property write down it is a property of fluid in which we are talking about a force between the layers layers of the flow okay so basically if if we assume if if we assume a laminar flow of fluid what is a laminar flow in the laminar flow the flow you can uh, you know you can think the flow like this i guess i might have discussed it earlier but again it's like when the liquid is flowing it is moving in the form of layers okay one layer is moving relative to the other okay it's not that the entire liquid has the same well uh, same uh, together they are moving it is not like that okay probably this layer has higher velocity than the lower layer and the lower most layer could be at rest okay so there is some sort of shear deformation is happening okay you discussed it last time okay great so uh anyways so basically we are talking about this phenomena only for the uh, laminar flow in which we can imagine the flow as if it is happening in layers layer after layers okay so in this scenario the every layer well down every layer will try to oppose oppose the relative motion of the adjacent layer this is the phenomena of the viscosity all right now this is just a phenomena and it is a property of a fluid this property can be you know this property viscosity is a property that varies from fluid to fluid so the honey which comes in your mind the first time we will hear the viscosity is a very viscous fluid how can you say it is a very viscous fluid you can see the way it flows it flows very very slowly isn't it suppose you have a honey like this there is a piece of honey and it starts moving like that the layer below this top layer will try to resist its motion a lot 
so it flows ultimately entire honey will be flattened out on the surface but it does very very slowly okay so same thing is not observed with the uh, with the water or with the oil okay it does very quickly yeah previous slide this one copy it quickly done all right so suppose i take this example suppose i take this example the topmost surface is moving with velocity v let's say okay and bottommost surface is at rest okay it is at rest the reason why it is at rest because the contact surface this is the surface which is in contact with the fluid the surface is at rest okay so if if the liquid has to make a contact with the surface then at a point of contact the motion between liquid and surface should not be there so the point which is in touch with the surface will have the same velocity of that of surface which is zero so the bottommost part is at rest the upper part is going with velocity v and let's say the thickness okay this thickness is let's say l okay now i have to quantify something related to viscosity right now when you when you look at this kind of thing in solid you will have uh, you will have shear modulus come in your mind or modulus of rigidity right which is what modulus of rigidity you had defined it as f by a divided by what divided by x by l you remember this x is the displacement of the topmost surface do you all agree okay now uh, here when it comes to fluid you know when it comes to fluid and suppose this is a fluid body you are applying force at the topmost surface can you tell me how much x can be does does x depends on the force which you are applying on topmost surface or x will be almost the same every time no matter what force you are applying everyone x will always be same no matter what force you are applying or it will be different for different force you are applying because in case of solid x was different for different forces you are applying at topmost surface talking about the shear deformation right in case of liquid liquid will always if you wait long enough if you wait long enough liquid will always take the shape of the container in which in it it is in or suppose you are putting it on the floor if you come after a long time you'll see that entire honey which was a square shape initially has flattened out and sp spread evenly on the surface same thing will happen with the water same thing will happen with the oil only difference is that the spreading of water will happen lot faster than the spreading of the honey okay but ultimately the spreading if you calculate the what is the displacement x it will be as much as possible so x will be same in all the liquids okay so the amount of displacement of topmost surface x is same for all the liquids right so what we do is that since we know that the rate of deformation is different not the amount of deformation rate of deformation is more relevant in case of liquid all of you able to understand what i am telling here a highly viscous fluid will not deform as quickly as 
a non viscous fluid will be okay so how can you quantify the rate of deformation this deformation i do not understand but deformation is x understood arnav deformation is x or you can say no strain is deformation strain is x by l you can say this is my deformation amount of deformation in solid or in liquid doesn't matter this is what the deformation is i am saying x by l if you wait long enough will be same for every fluid the only difference is somebody will get deformed quickly some liquid will get deformed later on so rather than calculating the deformation which is same for every liquid i will worry about the amount of deformation arnav that is a property of liquid liquid will ultimately take the shape of the container okay amount of deformation will be same but the rate of deformation which is strain rate if you differentiate it it will become equal to 1 by l dx by dt now dx by dt is what everyone velocity right so it will be v by l okay so this is the strain rate so strain rate is more meaningful in the case of liquid not the strain itself strain is meaningful for solids not for liquid strain rate for liquids so rather than defining the coefficient of rigidity for liquid we are defining here coefficient of viscosity okay which is what it is very simple it is stress which is f by a divided by rather than epsilon i'll have d epsilon by dt i'll have v by l this is my coefficient of viscosity it will be different for different fluids everybody understood how coefficient of viscosity is defined what will be the units of coefficient of viscosity units of coefficient of viscosity tell me unit of coefficient of viscosity you can tell in terms of pascals also f by a is pascals f by a is pascal velocity is meter per second so it will be pascal second numerator has l also you can do little bit of dimensional analysis you will directly get it okay everyone understood all of you understood right okay uh, those who are joining late please mute now what is f f is what what is f which i have written f here what it is f represents restoring force it tells you the resistance it is about the resistance how much the top layer is uh, getting resisted by the lower layer okay so this is what that force is okay now what if i take let's say this much if i take only l by 2 thickness rather than taking l if i take l by 2 thickness okay then will i get the same coefficient of viscosity will i get this only or not what will be my answer then everyone rather than taking l i take l by 2 okay i am comparing with this layer will i get different coefficient of viscosity should i get different or not first answer me that should i get the same one or different one should it depend on the uh, the amount of thickness i am taking in a liquid it should not right it should be same it should be same 
because it is a property of liquid right it should not depend on how much liquid i am taking so but then if you look at this formula of coefficient of viscosity the way we have derived it here instead of l you will write l by 2 because you are taking l by 2 length so the coefficient of viscosity will become half i got a new formula what is the catch here what is the catch now area remains same the area remains same it is a square thing area is of the top surface area when you take the shear uh, stress you take the top most surface right l becomes l by 2 force is see what you got force is between the two layers any two layers this is the force okay this f is the force between any two layers which is same f doesn't change then what is changing here in the equation yes that is correct rubo that is correct v is what v is basically relative velocity between two layers that you have considered two layers that are considered when you are taking the l when you are taking the l length the bottom layer has zero velocity topmost layer has velocity of v so relative velocity is v only okay when you are taking l by 2 when you are taking l by 2 length the top layer has velocity v middle velocity is v by 2 so relative velocity is v by 2 are you getting it so l becomes l by 2 v also becomes v by 2 so coefficient of viscosity remains same do you understand all of you please type in quickly so this remains unchanged okay all right so i hope coefficient of viscosity is very clear now if i tell you coefficient of viscosity of a liquid you can find out the force between the two layers okay and there are certain numericals based on it so let us see a uh, numerical on that there is one numerical from your textbook only which i'm sure you might have done it in your school also but let's do it again anyone has any doubt quickly type in why it is taking a lot of time it's not opening up okay anyways here is the question guys uh, all of you i'll draw the figure here i thought i could directly project it so you have a situation in which there is a mass over here okay and there is a pulley draw it with me everyone do you do the school questions in the classroom itself in the school classroom some of them okay see sometimes now you have to prioritize what you have to do you may have to wonder should i uh, do the school work should i do the centum work should i prepare for the ut should i prepare for the monthly test so uh, you know 
you have to be mindful about it okay if you're spending x amount of time in your school it requires three times more time than for the computer exam preparation that's how the wide it is so make sure you do that all right so there is a metal block of area there is a metal block of area 0.1 meter square okay it is connected to this is a metal block okay it is connected to 0 0.010 kg mass wire string that passes through the pulley as shown in the diagram okay there is a liquid liquid of thickness 0.3 mm 0.3 mm is a thickness it is it is placed between the metal block and the surface so this red one is the liquid the red color thing is the liquid all right now when it is released everything is released this mass is appeared to be moving with velocity of 0 0.085 meter per second okay you need to find out coefficient of viscosity of the liquid okay this is this moves with constant velocity okay do it yeah you can say that this is newton laws of motion entire chapter is um, a modified form of newton laws of motion okay metal block has the mass is not given for the metal block the mass is not given Anyone close to the answer? All right. You know, there is a basic premise here. You, you guys should start, uh, should continue solving question. I'll write here every time we will not argue this. I'll write here that the assumption is, okay, Arabi got something. All right, Pascal seconds RB. The liquid in contact with a surface moves with the surface's velocity. Okay, Rubhav got something, Parvati got something. Yeah, something like that. Pradyun also got it. Nobody else? No one else? Okay, so coefficient of viscosity is f by a divided by 
velocity divided by L. This is the formula, right? So uh, FL by AV. So F is what? F is the force between the two layers, any two layers. So that has to be equal to the T. Okay. The reason, what is the reason? If you draw the free boy diagram of the metal block, okay, it will be getting pulled with tension T. It is getting pulled with, uh, by tension T. There is this viscous force. Why there is a viscous flow force? Because the upper layer is trying to move relative to the lower layer. Upper layer where it is, it is in contact with the metal. So it tries to move with the metal. So the layer just below it applies a force F and acceleration is zero. So T should be equal to F. Okay. And over here also acceleration is zero. So MG should be equal to T. So basically F is equal to MG over here. So I can write over here M G into L. L is what? L is the thickness of the liquid. So M G T divided by area of cross section into velocity. I can directly take the velocity of the movement. That is the velocity of the topmost surface relative to the ground because thickness I'm taking from the ground. So A into uh, v which is given to us so mgt by av all right this comes out to be 3.45 into 10 raised to power minus 3 pascal seconds okay i hope everybody is clear about it fine all right All right, nothing will happen, Shitaj. It is independent of it. All right, so now, uh, you know, the when we talk about the viscous uh, flow or the viscosity, another very important thing that we will notice is the movement of object. Write down movement. movement of object inside a viscous fluid. See, we, uh, we know very well that if it is a non-viscous fluid, what will happen? We have continuity equation, we have the uh, Bernoulli's theorem, and we have many other things to take care of, there will be buoyant force, uh, there will be pressure force and all that. But because now we have to consider viscosity also, it is a viscous fluid, there will be another force additional to the uh, buoyant force, gravitation force, pressure force, additional to all these forces, there will be one more force which will be viscous force, fine? And this is what we are going to include now, all right? And in the case of Bernoulli's theorem, do you guys all remember that we had assumed that the viscous or the viscosity is zero? All of you remember that? Right? So viscous and non-viscous, what exactly is the difference between viscous and non-viscous fluid? Remember, viscous fluid has some coefficient of viscosity. Non-viscous fluid will have coefficient of viscosity zero. And if coefficient of viscosity is zero, Look at the uh, formula for coefficient of viscosity. If coefficient of viscosity is zero, F will be zero, right? So the force between the two layers will be zero. Or you can say that viscous force is like friction force between the two layers, okay? You know, you can treat it exactly like that. So if there is a relative velocity between the two layers, friction will be there in case of solid, right? Similar thing for the fluid also. Okay, and when you are applying the viscosity, you are assuming that laminar flow is happening. Okay, you are not taking a turbulent flow here. Okay, all 
yeah in viscous is like frictionless surface you can say like that okay so now uh, focus here everyone suppose you have a bucket okay a deep bucket like this it is filled with a fluid okay fluid is at rest the fluid is at rest fluid is not flowing but then suppose i drop an object inside it okay suppose i drop some random object inside it and it starts to move inside with certain velocity okay because its density is a lot higher than the density of the uh, density of the liquid and density of solid density of solid is very large compared to density of the liquid so it starts sinking in okay now why it is sinking in there will be a gravity force there will be a buoyant force and suppose it is a viscous fluid will there be a viscous force everyone will there be a viscous force on this object which is sinking down if yes why and how how it get developed why viscous force is there don't tell him because it is a viscous fluid <laughs> of course it is it moves the layer as it falls good right near the object surface liquid has velocity good so yes now you got the point ha huh. so the layers which are in contact with the solid the layers which are in contact with the solid these layers are moving with the solid all right so there is a relative velocity between the two layers the layer adjacent to the liquid uh, layer adjacent to the layer which is in contact with the solid okay there is a relative velocity what i am trying to say is this guys uh, things are very simple okay this layer which is in contact with this surface is moving down this layer is also moving down but the layer next to it this one was not moving this one is not moving right so there is a relative velocity between these two layers okay and because of that there will be viscous force all right but if the covalent viscosity is zero viscous force will be anyway zero no matter there is a relative velocity between the layers or not if covalent viscosity is zero then it is zero anyways all right so now the thing is that there will be a viscous force can you tell me the viscous force on on it on the object that is moving inside depends on what depends on everyone what should it depends upon tell me of course coefficient of viscosity it should depend on coefficient of viscosity all right second what else should it depend upon should it depend on the mass should it depend on the mass what do you think everyone does liquid care about the mass when it is applying the viscous force does it really matter to the liquid it doesn't matter it doesn't depend on it okay so does it depend on the area of contact area can i say area so you know when when you say area it also depends on how the area is oriented right whether you are talking about a sphere a rectangle a triangle right so i would say geometry here geometry right what else okay somebody said velocity will it depend on the velocity everyone viscous force does it depend on the velocity with which the object is moving everyone should it depend on the velocity yes it is 
velocity of the object. Surface area and everything comes under geometry. All right. Now over here, this eta is fine. Okay, eta is fine. Coefficient of viscosity is called eta. This is a Greek letter. Eta is fine. Velocity of object is fine. But this geometry, because of its dependence, because of its dependence on geometry, the viscous force will be different for different shape and sizes shape and sizes so it it becomes very difficult to create a formula that is valid for every shape and size in fact it is not possible okay so depending on every geometry there will be a formula okay there was this guy called stokes all right there was this guy called Stokes who had derived the formula for the spherical geometry. The viscous force on the spherical object. This guy has found out that. All right. So we will talk about the viscous force on a spherical object which goes inside the uh, liquid of coefficient of viscosity eta and with velocity v. All right. Surface area comes under geometry. Oh, shit. Everything is under geometry. All right. Ajay, can, can you tell me one thing? If velocity is increased, if I increase the velocity of the object, which is sinking down, will the viscous force increase, decrease, or remain same? If velocity with which the object is sinking down, if that is increased, that is increased, then the viscous force will increase, decrease, or remain same. Everyone. It will, it will increase guys. Why it will decrease? Why it will decrease? Tell me the reason. Tell me. Tell me the reason. If velocity increases, the force also increases. You remember eta is what? What is eta? Coefficient of viscosity is FL by AV. Okay. So if velocity is increased, F has to increase, right? So you can roughly say that, yes, if velocity keeps on increasing, viscous force keeps on increasing. All right. Everyone understand, right? Okay. So uh, there was this person Stoke who has given us Stoke's law. What does it talk about? It tells us, it gives us the viscous force formula, sorry. Viscous force equation for a spherical object. A spherical shaped object. Okay. Now that object could be hollow inside or whatever it is, it doesn't matter because viscosity, viscous force between the object and the liquid totally depends on what kind of surface it is, surface area, geometry, and everything. Okay. So Stokes law gives us the fiscus force to be equal to this. All of you write down 6 pi eta r into v. Okay. Where in your textbook, they have taken radius as r or a. Let me just find out. They have taken a. So we'll write down radius as a. 
Okay, so this is the viscous force between the solid a spherical shape object having radius A. A is a radius. V is the velocity with which the object is going down. Okay. So this is the viscous force only. Okay, this is not the net force. Apart from this force, there will be gravity and buoyant force also. All right. Now let us try to analyze what kind of motion it will have inside a liquid which is filled in a container like this, which is you can say the height of the container is very large, infinite, you can say. Okay. So suppose this is a container liquid has a density of rho coefficient of viscosity is eta this is the property of the liquid and you have a, a sphere a metal sphere that is dropped inside which has radius of a okay you can say density of this is sigma sigma is large compared to the Rho and it is a solid object, so it will sink. Okay, now while it is sinking, it will its velocity will increase or not? Everyone initially, while it is sinking, the net downward force is more than net upward force or not? Everyone, so its velocity will increase, velocity will keep on increasing in downward direction okay Achha, by the way viscous force is always this is always opposite to opposite to the velocity okay it doesn't matter where is gravity or whatever it is it only depends on which direction the velocity is viscous force will be opposite to that velocity which velocity it is it is a velocity relative to the liquid in which it is moving okay most of the time liquid will be at rest so you can say the velocity is velocity of the object only so viscous force is opposite to the velocity so now this velocity keeps on increasing now look at the expression of the viscous force will this viscous force keeps on increasing or not because velocity keeps on increasing okay it will keep on increasing this is viscous force okay apart from this force apart from the viscous force there will be two other forces the forces are gravity mg and you have a buoyant force also okay buoyant force will mg and buoyant change depending on how deep the object is sinking will mg and buoyant force depends on what is the velocity and how deep it is no it doesn't depend on it right but viscous force keeps on increasing so can you describe the motion of it object when it is sinking down tell me what can you tell how does it move everyone tell me about its velocity how it will be It goes down with constant acceleration. Somebody is saying, okay, acceleration is constant. Don't you see that uh, viscous force? Don't you think that it will keep on increasing? Viscous force is increasing as the velocity is becoming more and more. It will fast at the start and then slow down. What is fast? Velocity is fast or acceleration is more? What do you mean by that fast? Initially, net force is in downward direction. Viscous force initially was zero almost because velocity was very less. 
so downward force was very large when viscosity keeps on increasing do you guys see that downward force keeps on decreasing because viscous force is upward if it increases net downward force reduces okay there will be a time that the velocity velocity can become large enough become so large that net downward force becomes zero can can it happen by the way can it happen it will happen if the bucket you are considering is deep enough because before even reaching that velocity suppose it hits the bottom surface it will hit the bottom surface and stop getting it so if it is deep enough there will be a time where velocity will be so high and viscous force will become so much so that net force will become zero and if net force will become zero what i can say about acceleration what is it say acceleration is what zero it gives us constant velocity this constant velocity which is slowly achieved in this process is called terminal velocity after a long time this velocity constant velocity is reached it is called terminal velocity referred as vt okay i want you to find out what is vt okay viscous force is given to you and every other parameter is given mass m is not given okay you can consider mass m as density into volume so can you find out what is a terminal velocity formula everyone derive it it is from your school okay your school exam it this is one of the favorite question they ask let's say that velocity is vt just equate the forces at that moment net force will come zero so net downward force is equal to net upward force should i solve or should i wait everyone okay i'll give one more minute everyone get the answer very important for your school exam if not anything else Shethesh got something. Others. You haven't done this in school. Not done. 
Okay. All of you written this mg minus viscous force minus buoyant force should be equal to zero. M is what? The density of the solid into volume that is 4 by 3 pi a q into g minus huh, those who have got it uh, that is correct viscous force is 6 pi eta a terminal velocity is vt minus buoyant force which is rho times 4 by 3 pi a q into g here, it would, in the buoyant force, you would take density of the liquid, isn't it? So, pi will get cancelled away throughout. Then, this will be 2, this will be 3, this is 2. Okay. So, uh, from here, terminal velocity, you can see, you will get 2 by 9, 2 by 9, A cube into G. Sigma minus rho divided by uh, eta and one of the a is also gone like this a square. Okay. Oshik, we have done it. Derivation of buoyant force, we have done it. Look at the uh, first video of the fluid mechanics. Okay. Everyone, so this is the terminal velocity. Okay, so we had uh, only we have in our syllabus only a geometry of sphere to be considered. Okay, for other geometries, we don't have it in our curriculum. Okay, so only sphere uh, we have learned in which we can find out the viscous force between the sphere and a liquid when the sphere is moving inside the liquid. Okay. All right. Now there is something called Reynolds number also that is defined with respect to the uh, viscosity only. So write down. Hmm, what happened? Somebody sent something. First, write down this Reynolds number. Yes. Not buoyant viscous force. Okay, you're talking about a Stokes law? Derivation of a Stokes law? No, the derivation is not there. Okay. It is empirically found. You can plot a graph and, you know, it's not there. You just assume that this is the viscous force. Okay. All right. So, Reynolds number. There was this person, name was Osborne Reynolds. Okay, so in his name, on his name, this Reynolds number is given. Now, what does it indicate? Reynolds number, Reynolds number will tell us this Reynolds number is RE. Reynolds number can tell us if the flow is laminar, that is streamlined, or turbulent. Looking at the Reynolds number, you can tell that. Okay. Now, I'll just tell you the uh, you know, thought process behind the Reynolds number, then we'll discuss what it is. Okay. First of all, you tell me if uh, viscosity of some liquid is very high. Let's say I have, I'm telling you that I have two liquid, liquid one and liquid two. Velocity is same. The, velo the flow velocity, they're flowing in a pipe. Okay. Velocity is same. 
this one has coefficient of viscosity eta 1 this has coefficient of viscosity eta 2 eta 1 is large compared to eta 2 and i have told you only one flow is with, uh, laminar which one that can be which has higher viscosity or which has a lower viscosity which has more chance of being laminar that's what i'm asking here what do you think There's a split. I could have taken a poll, but now it's okay. Okay. All right. Shitish, can you explain why higher viscous has more chance of being laminar flow? Why? What is the reason that you're saying that high viscosity implies that it has more chance of becoming a laminar flow? See, it is, uh, if not laminar, consider viscosity as in separation is lesser. Okay, good. So see, if well, uh, viscosity is high, if viscosity is high, it means that the layers, are they don't like to get separated. They want to move together. Okay, they will try to maintain some sort of, uh, you know, sanity in the movement. Together they will move. They will not start moving zigzag manner. All right. Now you can, you know, imagine the, let's say in a pipe, water is flowing in one pipe and uh, honey is flowing in another pipe. Okay. And both the pipes velocity is very high. So now you will understand that the smooth flow will be there in the pipe in which honey is there, which has higher viscosity. Okay. There is a chance of uh, having a turbulent flow with the water because it has a lesser viscosity. So viscosity actually promotes the laminar flow because the layers will try to be together. Okay, they will move in a defined manner. Okay, do you un understand this logic, everyone? So good. So if viscous force is more. So viscosity is higher, more chance that it is a laminar flow. Chance of laminar increases. Okay, great. Now suppose you have two liquids, liquid one and liquid two, which has the same coefficient of viscosity, but their velocities are different. Same liquid you have taken into pipes at similar pipes their velocities are different v1 is more than v2 where is the chance that laminar flow will be happening at higher velocity or at a lower velocity lower right lower okay so this is very clear so if velocity is lesser then the chance is that it become laminar will be higher Okay, so you have two things to look at. You have viscosity to look at and you have velocity to look at. All right, you cannot just look at the velocity and say that it should be a turbulent flow. What if viscosity is very high? Then there's a chance that it can be a laminar flow. And at the same time, you can't just look at the viscosity and say that viscosity is very less. So it will be a turbulent flow. What if velocity is very less? There's a chance that it can be laminar. So it becomes complicated to look both, right? So that is the reason why both of these factors are combined together. Both of the factors are combined together and Reynolds number has been put forward. When you look at the Reynolds number, you're accounting for both the variables together, okay? So it is, you know, as good as suppose you have to look at a variable X also, a variable y also what you do is that you define a variable z which is equal to x by y and rather than looking at x and y separately you just look at x divided by y and depending on that you can say 
So whatever it is, let's discuss it again here. So Reynolds number is basically a ratio of, it is a ratio of the inertial force, write down. divided by viscous force. I'll come back to it. First, write it down, viscous force. So it's a ratio between the two forces, okay? Inertial force represents velocity in a way. Viscous force represents coefficient of viscosity in a way, okay? So in a way, you're taking the ratio of two things and it will be dimensionless no dimension or no units okay now what is this inertial force and what is this viscous force inertial force is simply uh, you know it is rate of change of momentum is inertial force simply put ignoring the uh, viscosity it is rate of change of momentum now how to find out that if you consider a pipe in which liquid is flowing Let's say if liquid is flowing with velocity V, okay, then dm by dt is what? dm by dt we have found out earlier, last class only, rho AV. All of you remember this, dm by dt, everyone? Okay, so if velocity is constant, V dm by dt, is your rate of change of momentum. Rate at which momentum is changing is rho a v square. Clear to everyone, this is called the vis inertial force, sorry. This is the inertial force. Rate of change of momentum, okay? See, I'm telling you how it is derived. I could have directly written, but then I thought I should tell you. That's the reason why. Now the viscous force can be written in terms of eta, okay? Eta is F by A divided by V by L, all right? So this is F L by A V. So the viscous force can be written as eta A V divided by L, fine. So all you have to do is to take the ratio between the inertial force and the viscous force. You will get the Reynolds number. Okay. So Reynolds number, if you take a ratio, rho A V square divided by eta A V by L. So Reynolds number will become equal to uh, rho V L by eta. All right, and if the pipe's diameter is D, if the diameter of the pipe is D, you can write the Reynolds number as rho V D by eta. Okay, now this is a variable which you can use to find out whether the flow is uh, laminar flow, streamline flow, or it is a turbulent flow. Anyone has any doubt in this derivation that we have done? Quickly tell me. By the way, this is there in your textbook. Okay. It is there in your textbook uh, It uh, under Reynolds number. Okay. Somewhere hidden. You just have to read it carefully. Type in quickly. Have you understood this? Okay, then all right. So this is a number. Okay, why it is called number because it doesn't have any units. So it is found out. Okay, it is found out that uh, when Reynolds number, write down, 
that when Reynolds number is less than thousand, it is a laminar flow. When Reynolds number is greater than two thousand, it is found to be turbulent in nature. This is turbulent flow. Okay, and Reynolds number between thousand and two thousand. Don't ask me exactly at thousand what happens. Exactly at two thousand what happens? Okay, it is. It gives you a range. Okay, it, it is. It's it's not that a very sharp line is there that one point this side laminar one point that side turbulent it doesn't suddenly transitions this just give you an indication okay so Reynolds number between thousand to two thousand it is a transient flow transient or you can say unsteady flow. The flow is getting transitioned. From laminar to turbulent, it is you can say half laminar, half turbulent, something like that. You can say, okay. So these ranges you should remember, and this is true every time. This is true, not just the uh, the uh, flow in a pipe. This is true for any kind of pipe. Let's say you are considering a pipe which has, uh, let's say, cross section like this. A square cross section and water is coming out through it. All right. So you can use a Reynolds number formula rho uh, rho v d divided by eta and find out the Reynolds number. Okay. What you'll take d as if you have certain irregular shape, let's say hexagon is there instead of circular cross section. If there's a circular cross section, you will take d as diameter. But if it is not, then what do you take d as? If it is not a circular, then what do you take? D as. Then you will take D as hydraulic diameter. It is given as four times area of cross section divided by perimeter. Okay, four times area of cross section divided by perimeter. In case of circle, it comes out to be 2R, which is diameter only. Okay. In case of any other cross section, you can find out hydraulic diameter to be equal to 4 times area of cross section divided by the perimeter. All right. And use that over here. Fine. Anyway, so there is a numerical on whatever we have just done. Let us take that from your textbook. Anyone has any doubt? Quickly type in. Meanwhile, Yes, somebody typed. Why we use diameter again? See, it is not that you have to use diameter only. You could have used radius. Then Reynolds number range will be different. Reynolds, if you take radius, Reynolds number range will be less than 2000, greater than 4000. Okay. Just that we have assumed, let's take diameter. Then the numbers will be changed accordingly. All right. That is not required, Ashitaj. That discussion is not required. Just take it as it is, hydraulic diameter. You learn that in engineering. This is fluids. But anyway, that hydraulic diameter is anyway not part of your curriculum itself. I thought I could just tell you because you might be wondering what if the cross section of the pipe is not circular. So just uh, additional information. Okay, I want you to solve this. Solve this question. Okay, do it completely yourself and do it. All of you should do it. You will see the kind of calibration errors probably that could creep in. You need a lot of practice in calculation itself. Forget about the concepts. You should be good with numbers. So I'm seeing that a uh, lot of you are making silly errors in calculation. 
that requires some practice. Are there any liquid with zero viscosity? Um, you can say near zero, okay, some of the oils. But yeah, that is an ideal scenario that doesn't happen naturally. Basically, they are asking you whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. So, first tell me the Reynolds number. You can modify the equation of Reynolds number in terms of flow rate also, if you want. Anyone close to the answer? Okay, Arabi got something. Others? Did you get any notification from school reopening? As in physical classes? Do you want school to get reopened? No. <laughs> Except start at 10 a.m. Huh? <laughs> now it will be very difficult to wake up early and attend the classes. Travel and attend the class. All right. See, the main problem you guys face is that you have not seen the hard work 
which is required along with school managing the centum and the comedy exam becomes more difficult for you okay because you are anyway complaining that the time is very less now when school starts travel is there you get tired also so you are not used to that kind of rigor so probably that may have some impact anyways Reynolds number is four times. See, I have modified the Reynolds number formula in terms of flow rate. Do you all see that? Why I have modified? Because flow rate is given to me. Isn't it? That's the reason why. Density is 1000. What should I write instead of Q? I have to write in uh, meter cube per second. Right? So 0.48 into 10 raised to power minus 3 that is meter cube this is per minute per second will be divided by 60 into pi into eta that is 10 raised to power minus 3 into dia that is 1.25 10 raised to power minus 2 anybody calculated this what is this equal to See, do the calculation yourself. I am telling you again and again. I can't, uh, you know, emphasize it enough how important it is. Do not look at the textbook and all that. It's very easy to fool yourself, okay, and make you believe that yeah, you got it. Do it yourself. What is the answer you're getting? Even if you get a wrong answer, it is fine. It is at least you've tried it. Calculate this quickly. All of you, let's see how well you can deal with the numbers. Everyone. All of you understood, right? How it comes? No one has any doubt in that. Understood all of you? This is understood, right? Whatever I have written. Okay, get the answer. You want me to solve? Everyone? Parvati got something, Arabi got something. Nobody else got anything other than these two. Anyways, 10 is minus 3 is gone. 1, 0 is gone. It's 12.8. Is it? It is 12.8. That less. How can it be? 81.56, Gurman is saying. Okay. No, not that. So this is 4 into 48 into 10 to the power 2 divided by 6 pi into 1.25. How much it is equal to? See how pathetic you have the calculation skills. You are not able to calculate. Everybody is getting different if I answer. This is very bad. It will, you know, impact you during the exam. No one? All right. Anyways, so this will be 815.2, roughly. If you do your calculation properly. <laughs> All right. So you can be proud of yourself. Look at this. You're not able to, uh, you know, multiply or divide, add, subtract. It'll not lead you anywhere. Okay. So make sure you are, uh, you know, practicing a lot of calculation your end. 
otherwise someone come from grade 5 will beat you hands down because of the calculations only <laughs> all right so this is the reynolds number so this is laminar or turbulent everyone laminar or turbulent laminar it is less than 1000 right now if the flow rate is increased to 3 liter per minute what will be the reynolds number then do we need to calculate it again all over again reynolds number will be what if the flow rate becomes 3 liter per minute do you need to calculate it again everyone what should you do See, Reynolds number is proportional to Q, right? Proportional to Q. So, 3 divided by 0 0.48 times 815, 0 0.2. Like this you can do. So, 0 0.48 flow rate, Reynolds number is 815. So, for 3 flow rate, it will be 3 divided by 0 0.48 into 815.2. Okay. So, it is roughly uh, 6 times of the earlier this thing so reynolds number will come out to be around 5060 okay 5175.5 okay 5175.5 now this is a turbulent flow right so if you increase the flow rate to this much your uh, flow will become turbulent okay anyone has any doubt on the viscosity whatever we have done till now Type in quickly, is it clear to everyone? 